Riding long distances is such a rewarding feeling. Getting on out there, exploring new areas and spending more time in the saddle is nothing but a good thing, right? But how do you do it best? Well, here's some helpful hints on what you can do to make riding a really long way a little bit more enjoyable. Riding long distances normally requires a certain level of fitness. Now, I'm not talking XC Pro Fit because well, that's just not really achievable for a lot of people. But if you want to start getting into those big distances out there, being able to pace yourself and having a level of fitness that's going to last for a certain amount of time is going to be very, very useful. Don't be put off though, because everyone has different standards. So what might be a long distance for someone could be very different for someone else. It's a matter of perception. It's worth setting a goal or having a distance in mind that you can make as a target. That way you can really build up to it and sort of work your fitness up to that. I mean, it might only take a week to get used to it or it might take months, but either way, having that target gives you really something to challenge yourself and aim for at the end. Let's talk preparation then. First up, you're gonna to wanna to factor in the weather. Now, regardless of the season, be it spring, summer, autumn, or winter, it's gonna change greatly what you might wear. Now, obviously, if you're going out in the winter, a coat is gonna be a necessity. In the summer, you're not gonna to wanna to overdress either. Uh, I'll always take a coat with me if it is a rainy season, just to be on the safe side. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Whilst the summer and the winter might be fairly easy to figure out when it comes to clothing wise, because you've got those extreme ends of the spectrum, spring and autumn can be a little trickier because they can throw up all kinds of weather. So you never know if you might get caught in an April shower, say. Layers will be your friend here. Because of those changing temperatures and conditions, it's better to be able to take clothes on and off if you've got them rather than not have them at all. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to plan your food and drink. Now you can obviously take snacks, fruit bars, energy gels, all that kind of stuff with you, stashed in your pockets or in your backpack if necessary but it's worth bearing in mind or maybe planning your route around possible cafe stops or shop stops, where if you are getting low on food, you can pop on in and get some backup if needed. Next up, an essential, and it is water. That good old H2O. You're not gonna get very far without planning your ride with a bit of water involved. Now, a lot of people, they like to just glug a load of water, get it down and before they go out and hope for the best on the way, but I would definitely not recommend that. If it's really hot weather, you're gonna be wanting to consume at least half a litre of water every hour. Now, whether that's by water bottles, one or two on your bike, or you take a backpack, we'll get onto that in a little bit. That backpack then, like I said, you can fill the thing full of water. Hydration packs these days can take absolutely litres and litres, so you shouldn't be getting caught out not having enough fluid. As you've got a backpack on, you can also fill it full of those added extras that you may well need. So if the weather's looking a little bit ropey, it's all right at the moment, but you can chuck a, a coat in there if needs be, a waterproof can go in, and also tools as well. So things like the basics, so you're gonna want an inner tube, a multi-tool, some tire levers, maybe tubeless plugs, chain link, chain tool, I mean, you don't want to be overfilling. You don't want to be carrying a 10 ton backpack around with you, but you definitely do want to carry the basics to get you out of any trouble should you be miles from home. Planning the ride next then, where do you want to go? Now this can be the best part because the world is your oyster, but there's a few things you should be wary of. Now, you don't want to go planning a massive 100 miler if the furthest you've ever ridden is 15 miles because you're probably not going to make it. And if your fitness isn't gonna allow you to do that either, then you're just setting yourself up for a disappointment or a letdown, which is not cool either. Try and plan something that's gonna be achievable. We'd suggest using a route planner to really get the most out of your ride. We have Commute as a partner and it's a fantastic tool. It shows the terrain you'll be riding, the permissions for riding in certain areas, and even suggests where to go based on other users' feedback. Now, when you are planning your route, choosing where to ride can also be a factor as well, and what bike you use. If you're gonna be doing lots of gravel roads and sort of light cross-country work, then an XC bike is gonna fit the bill perfectly. If things are gonna get a whole lot rowdier, you're probably gonna to wanna to up the travel and think about an enduro bike or something like that. So that's worth bearing in mind as well. Once you've planned that route, then you can integrate it onto great things such as cycle computer like this one here and they can actually show you heads up where you're going if you don't have a cycle computer you can also still use a map go old school why not or even just use it on your phone as well but the added bonus is you can keep track of your stats and things like that so the distance your heart rate maybe your mileage your average speed so it can really help you pace yourself when you are doing those big old epics 
final tip of route planning then, as I said before, plan in the odd food and drink stop as a contingency plan. It doesn't even necessarily need to be a shop, but just somewhere that you might be able to refill the water bottles or like I said, grab a snack if needs be. I tell you what, if you're going for it, even plan at your nan's house on the ride. Why not? It just helps to have a backup location. The further you ride, the riskier it gets, especially if you're heading out into the wilderness. So telling people where you're going, the rough route that you plan on taking, and then hopefully what time you aim to be back as well is a really crucial thing for your safety as much as anyone else's. Now, if you get into a bit of a sticky situation, a mechanical, you're injured, worst case scenario, something really bad has happened to you and you haven't made it home by roughly the time that you said you might be, then those people that you've told the route that you're going on to well, at least they'll know where to hopefully come out and look or send the relevant authorities to go and have a look as well. It's also a good idea to plan in a few alternatives on your route. If you're going out on a massive big loop like this, but you get into a bit of a spot of bother halfway, maybe your bike is going a bit wrong or something like that, having a few shorter loops where maybe you might be able to turn out and come back home sooner, and although you've got to cut the ride shorter, could really save you in the long run. This works really good if the weather changes all of a sudden, you know, you set out and it's nice and then all of a sudden it's horrible, or if you just start getting really hungry, you run out of food or water as well. Riding solo is good fun, we don't deny it. But if you're heading out for your first long trip, why not try and wrangle in a friend or two to come along for the ride? It's always nice to have someone to share the ride with and share the experiences as well. You'll be able to motivate each other and pace each other. And if something bad happens along the way, then you have someone to help you out too. Make sure your bike is in tip-top condition before you do head out for any epics. There's no point sort of neglecting it. You get out there and it breaks immediately. That ain't gonna be any fun for nobody at all. So even simple things, make sure that chain's lubed up, all the pivots, the bolts are tight, everything's running as it should be. Even damage in the tires, no slices or plugs in them because, well, you don't wanna get the furthest point from home for things to just break that could have been avoided. You're finally on your ride and it's awesome. You can't wait to smash it, but wait, you need to pace yourself. Don't go full guns out of the gate and just absolutely tear off. You're gonna be feeling full of energy, but don't let that fool you. It's a long way to go. Ease into that ride and know your limits. Don't be going full tilt. It's a marathon, not a sprint, remember. You're better off starting slower to make it the entire distance than going, like I said, full gas out the gate and only getting halfway before the inevitable bonk happens and no amount of energy gels is gonna get you out of that pain cave. There you have it then, some great ways and helpful hints hopefully to get you out riding those big long rides going for a real long time. But do you know what? I think it's about time we went and did one. So I'm gonna go for a spin. You guys, let me know your next big epic ride you're gonna do down in the comments, but I'm gonna get out of here. Happy riding everybody and I will catch you next time. Toodles.